Okay, now we're going to review two, actually a couple ideas. We're going to talk about shortages and surplus, and then we're going to talk about price floors and price ceilings. And this should all be a review, but if it's not, or you're at home, or well, I guess you'd be at home, why would you be in school watching this? So, it's a good point. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is shortage. So we're on a simple supply and demand graph, and a shortage is when demand is greater than supply. Right, so demand greater than supply equals shortage, and this is due to a decrease in price under uh, decrease in price actually, um, yeah, under equilibrium. So let's say that our price is ten dollars. Uh, price equilibrium is ten, and we're here at quantity equilibrium. And let's say the price is lowered for whatever reason below the cost. I'm uh, sorry, the price of equilibrium. So let's say you know that. Um, something really cool. We'll do tickets again, right? So um, somebody who everybody wants to come see is charging 10 bucks a ticket and at that level um, we will have Q sub E tickets being sold. But then they drop the price down to five dollars. Well at five dollars um, they're not really going to want to perform because they're not going to make as much money but now everyone's going to want to watch the performance because it's so cheap. So what's happened is it's created a shortage and the shortage, right, you see the supply is right here where P sub 1 hits uh, the supply. And then when P sub 1 hits demand, it, you drop it down to Q sub D. So you can see D is greater than S. Um, and since it's a change in price, it's a change in quantity demanded and a change in price, or a supply demanded, quantity supply bit. We'll do that again. It's a change in quantity demanded and a change in quantity supplied. And so it creates a shortage. Think of it this way. If, um, and this whole area is considered the shortage, from Q sub S to Q sub D is the shortage. Think of it if you had tennis shoes, right? Uh, new Jordans come out, they're 150 bucks. At that point, everyone wants them, they drop down to $75. Everyone's gonna want more, but Nike's not gonna wanna sell that many because it won't make as much profit. So there creates a shortage. And you see this all the time at Christmas. There's always one hot toy every kid has to have at Christmas, and there's a huge shortage. If they wanted to fix the shortage, they actually would raise the price up to an equilibrium. Okay? Same thing with a surplus. A surplus is where supply is greater than demand. Right? So we have a simple supply and demand graph, and you have P sub E and then Q sub E. So let's say at P sub E, um, let's say it's $10 and they've raised the equilibrium price, they raised price to $15. And at $15, uh, P is going to hit demand here, so demand. And then P sub 1 is going to hit supply here, so you see that supply is greater than demand due to an increase in price over the equilibrium. Remember, the shortage is a change in price under equilibrium price. This is over equilibrium price. So supply is greater than demand, and you can see this area between P sub D and P, or uh, sorry, uh, Q sub D and Q sub S represents the, sh the surplus. So for instance, if you know, some concert you want to go see, they jack the price up twice as much, then no one's going to want to go see it, but they're going to be happy to perform. Or if Jordans were selling for 150 bucks and they jacked the price up to 250 not that many people are going to want to buy them, so they'll have a surplus of shoes left over. So on both of these, on surplus or on shortage, if eventually, if everything's going to go back to normal, once the price goes back down and it will go back to quantity equilibrium. So shortages is where demand is greater than supply, and a surplus is when supply is greater than demand, and here's how you graph it, all right? And there are actually some government surpluses, and let me move this for the crowd at home. There are actually some government surpluses and shortages that are created because they screw up with the market, all right? We call these price floors and price ceilings. So we're back to an equilibrium price, an equilibrium quantity, and a simple demand, supply and demand graph. And a price floor is a government mandated minimum price that creates a surplus. And a good example of this is minimum wage. Let's say that uh, P sub B, so the price of equilibrium is $5 an hour, and at that point, this many people want to work, Q sub B people want to work for minimum or for $5 an hour. But the government says, no, the minimum wage is going to be $7.50 or $7.25, whatever it is. And so at $7.50, Worker, our uh, businesses will not demand as much labor, so they have to pay more. So they'll only want to supply at, or, uh, uh, demand at Q sub B, but we, the people, workers, would supply more labor, so we'd have Q sub S. So S is greater than D, 
and this is a um, this creates a price floor. I want to hold on one second.